Hey guys, how you all doing today? Now for today's video, we're going to be talking about some new stuff for Jurassic World Dominion. That's right, we're back again. And for today's video, I want to discuss some new images that have come out for Jurassic World Dominion, revealing the practical effects that have been joining the Jurassic community, including one brand new species that is added to the list from the original Michael Crichton novels themselves, and is one of Colin Trevorrow's personal favorite dinosaurs, the Microceratus itself, and the secret behind its design. So yes guys, we're back discussing Dominion topics. It's been quite a while, I do apologize for that, but to start things off with getting back, I just want to discuss two things in today's video. The first being these practical effects, and also a quick thing before that actually I should talk about, is the runtime of the movie has been announced. Now, the confirmed run date officially, as of this moment, is 2 hours and 27 minutes, making it the longest in the franchise. But one thing that's also interesting to point out is the Dominion prologue is not going to be a part of this, so don't worry for anybody, you won't have- nothing has been spoiled for the movie's opening. It was originally supposed to be the opening, however, since it was released to the public, I think we're going to be for an interesting opening, since we now have no idea what it is. But, that's enough for the opening of the movie and the runtime, as that's been generally known for now, but a couple days ago, we got some new news for, well, we've been getting a lot recently, but one of the biggest bit of news that we've gotten recently is some images for the practical effects for the film. These include dinosaurs that we've seen in CGI before, such as the Dilophosaurus, the Pyroraptor, Stiggy Moloch, who interestingly has a saddle on his back, which leaves me to believe that he has some importance in the Malta sequence, since we've n discussed that quite a bit on this channel in the past for, like, black market stuff, the battle that's going to be happening between Carnotaurus and Allosaurus, and now we've got another dinosaur to add to that scene. But an interesting dinosaur that we haven't seen at all discussed recently is none other than the Microceratus, which is a dinosaur that many fans would know has been a part of the franchise's canon for quite some time, making its first canon introduction in Jurassic World. While not showing on screen, it was listed as a canon species in the park, with them being basically like the compies of the herbivores in this case. But now it's finally making its appearance, and quite different from its design on the Jurassic World website, I must say. Instead of being a vibrant yellow with bits of other colors, it is now this crisp blue, more of an aqua blue, I must say, and it looks absolutely stunning. But one thing that's very interesting to talk about is the design it holds, and an important thing that might explain why it looks this way, because in one of the other images in the background, you can actually see a group of small little creatures together. And I don't say dinosaurs, because these are the Lystrosaurs, which we've only seen one image of before this, which was posted by Colin Trevorrow ages ago on his Twitter, which was when he was shutting down Jurassic World production, of, like months ago, before the film was finished wrapping. And we finally get to see what the Lystrosaurus looks like fully, without a um, COVID mask covering its beautiful face. And this raises an interesting point, and that is that these two actually look nearly identical. The only difference, apart from their colors of course, with the Lystrosaurus being a yellowish brown and the Microceratus being a aqua blue, we can say. But the other difference, of course, being the legs of these, because the Lystrosaurus being a quadrupedal lizard-like creature, although it did have hairs so it wasn't fully lizard-like, while as the Microceratus actually had forearms and could also climb trees, if I recall. But one of the interesting things is how similar they do look, because if you look at the skulls of these, they look nearly identical, which I gotta say, I really do like this, because if I recall, I could be wrong on this, but Lystrosaurus, while not being a dinosaur, actually its branch, its family branch did expand into the dinosaurs, and if I recall, it also connected to Microceratus itself, which if that is the case, it's a nice little nod to sort of connect these two, as they're different species entirely, but they share genetic structure as 
this shows, and I really do like that. It's similar to what people have theorized for the Giganotosaurus and Allosaurus, as for explanation why they both have some spikes on the back to sort of reference how they are in the same family branch as Carcharodontosaurids, but it's, it's awesome to see. And I know some people are going to be like, well, why are they making them look the same? I think it's a really good idea. I like seeing the similarities between some different species because it helps make them look like they're in the same community instead of just having complete opposite dinosaurs. Interestingly though, one thing I will point out actually for the movie itself is we have got more dinosaurs than we've ever imagined. And also, recently an image for a Biosyn Sanctuary um, list, which is supposed to be this poster that's coming out soon apparently lists a lot of the dinosaurs. Not all of the new ones are even on this list, which is interesting. It doesn't include things like this Microceratus, the Lystrosaurus, Moros Intrepidus, Atrociraptor, and includes a lot of the Injun dinosaurs as well, which is going to be very interesting. So, it definitely does confirm that maybe Biosyn's not the only company that's going to be in the film, which raises a lot of questions on what other companies could we be getting. Could we get Manticore? Could we see the return of, like, older companies, maybe engines trying to come back or something? Who knows what's going on? But that about wraps up this video, guys. A rather shorter one, I am afraid. Hopefully we can do more of these in the future as I'm getting more into the channel. But if you've enjoyed this video, guys, I would appreciate the like. And if you haven't already, do hit the subscribe button to join the hunt. And I want to say thank you for helping this channel out. We are almost at 3,000 subscribers. I think we're at 2.7 thousand right now. I could be wrong on that. I'll have to check. But hopefully we can reach 3,000 by the end of the month. And by Dominion's release, I hope we can get to 5,000. If we can, I will be super happy. But anyway, guys, I want to thank you for the support. And until next time... I'll see you later. Bye-bye.